So we're going to do a, a lab that uh, explains pH a little better um, as far as determining the pH of unknown substances that you might encounter, different beverages, uh, different medicines, okay? But what we need to do first is we need to establish a standard. What does a standard mean? Okay. Yeah, in a, in a way it does. Yep. Almost like a control group in a sense. Yeah, it is almost a control group in a sense. Why Why is that? Because it, it, it has something to act under its natural circumstances where nothing is altered. Good. Yeah, so we're going to establish a standard uh, for a range of pH buffers. Okay, so we just talked about what a buffer is. Ryan, us what a buffer does. maintains the pH of the solution in a certain range. So I have buffers here for um, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay, so you can kind of see those right there. Um, and this is, these are the buffers that you guys will also uh, play with, I guess. Um, so we need to establish a range uh, so the test that we're going to do is a color a metric test. So it's a color metric assayer test. And what that means is your results are qualitative. So you're just going to be able to buy your result and see what the color of that uh, particular test is. Okay. So what we need to do though is we need to establish with a two what is the color that's something that is pH2 makes. Does that make sense? And then we'll go and we'll establish the color that something that is a three makes. And all the way through this range, all the way up to a base 11. Does that make sense? Why will that be useful when you guys are cut loose and do your unknowns for the beverages and for the medicines? Why will that be helpful? Why is a, a standard helpful in a colorimetric test like this. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have an unknown that you test and it comes out blue, and blue means pH 4, you could properly infer that whatever you tested is what? pH 4, right? So that's the, that's the value of all this, is that you're going to establish a standard. So we'll make our little rainbow standard here. And then we will, as a group, agree that this color means this, this color means this, this color means this. And then you will go to the unknowns, perform the pH test, and tell me what the pH of that substance is. Fair enough? So we're going to establish our standard here. We're using these buffers, and we're using literally cabbage juice. That cabbage back there, red cabbage has dyes in it that are sensitive to pH. So if you boil this cabbage, it's literally a cabbage, if you boil this cabbage and collect the uh, dye that was boiled out of the leaves of this cabbage, you can use it as a pH indicator for colorimetric tests. In other words, this purple juice is going to change color in different pH solutions. Okay, in these different buffers. Okay, so I'll do the first one. Uh, the protocol here is you take five milliliters, and I've already done this, and actually as a group, we only need to do this once, so we'll do this once together, and then you guys will do the unknowns, okay? Uh, so I have five milliliters of this uh, buffer here. I'm going to add three milliliters of the cabbage extract. You guys will help me with this in a moment. I'll add these three. Like this. So that's one, two, three. So these bulbs are one milliliter bulbs. Um, if you fill it up to right here, that's one milliliter that you're transferring into your. Uh, solution. So what color do we get? Uh, this is P, this is a pH of 2. What color we got? 
what would you call that? Pinkish? Pink? Yeah, I guess I would call that pinkish too. Looks like pink. Um, so for us so far, pH of 2 on a color a metric test gives you pink. So we've established that. Now we're going to go on to 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11. Who would like to do the next one? Edward, step right up. It's not very hard. You just sort of transfer the liquid. Okay. How many milliliters? Three. And it's fine, you know, if it's a little more, a little less, it's not going to make a huge difference. Okay, show it to the crowd. What say you? Oh, by the way, um, your table that you made last class, take that out. That's the table that we're actually filling out right now. The uh, pH value. Can I put this down? Yeah, you can put it right next to that. So this pH value table right here is what you're filling out. You should have uh, eight, lane, eight um, rows for your different pH values. And I can announce them out again. Does everybody have their table out? I can give you the numbers. We're testing a pH 2, pH 3, pH 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So far, the results are 2, very pink. It's actually kind of a nice color. Two is pink. Three is a more purplish color. Three is a more purple. It's a light purple. Sure. You go with magenta. Who wants to test four for us? Or should I just start calling on people? Yeah, come on up. We'll just form a line. We're going to do four. Sean's got four. Good. Show the crowd here. What do we got? What do you, what's, what color do you guys say? Dark purple. pH 4 equals dark purple as we establish our standard. Where was next? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Can form a line even. Here you go, we're on five. Okay. Light purple, light purple. Yep. So we've gone from like light pink, dark purple, light purple, 
Who's up? Who's up next? Okay. I don't. Do, are we doing a one? I don't think we're doing a one. We have two and three. Oh, we've crossed over into bluish greenish. Cyan. Cyan, turquoise, whatever you want to call it. Robert, were you interested in coming up? So eight was turquoise. Let's see what nine is. I'm assuming that he put something in the container. Yeah, those are buffers. I figured. We should have three. Three, yeah. Ooh, this is interesting. Exactly. Because I was trying to beat it. That's so cool. If you didn't go before me, I would have both. First of all, that was four years ago. You said great. Huh? Okay, what's the result? Green. Gone from turquoise to green. As we're going up the scale towards the basic side, we're going from the uh, reddish, pinkish, purplish to the bluish, greenish. Now we're on to 10. Who's going to do 10 for us? Yep, come on right up. Thank you. 10. Yep, three milliliters of that. That's one more. Yep. We got a lighter green. Is it the same color? Yes. Let's see. Come up. Hard to tell the difference between a 9 and a 10. Anybody want to do 11? Whoever wants to do it. Edward, you haven't come up yet. Go ahead, George. Edward was the first one. Oh, that's right. Hmm. That's cheating. Wait, hold them up together. So let's, yeah, let's hold them up together. Let's flip these around. So we got a two, a three, a four, a five, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The last three are very similar. Last one's like. What does that tell you about your results? For the bases, it's going to be a little more difficult to tell the difference between those basic numbers from 9 to 11 because the colorimetric test gives you colors that are similar. So that might be a weakness of this particular test, right? Testing it this way qualitatively instead of quantitatively might not be the best way to do this. Okay, um, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you where to get the test tubes. You get to pick three different unknowns from the variety of solutions over there and test them. You test them by putting maybe five milliliters of the unknown into a test tube, just like you put the buffer, then adding to that maybe one or two milliliters, one or two pipettes full of this uh, red cabbage indicator. Okay, this is a qualitative test using colors to infer the pH of unknowns. Does that make sense to everyone? Versus a quantitative test in which you get a number associated with whatever solution you're testing. When I break out the probeware and you put a, uh, a pH meter into a solution, it tells you pH 7.6. 
this is a little bit of a better way to think about what you're getting experimentally. Okay. I like starting off this way. It makes you think more than just putting a probe in and saying it says 7.6. Here you have to infer based on some information that you've established yourself as standard. So in that drawer right there, in the middle, by the squirrel, one of the blue tape, are big test tubes. Everybody can get three. I have some test tube holders over here. And I'm going to pause this thing here while we do this. Here are our results. I feel like I'm... So based on this, uh, based on this scale, you should be able to infer what your unknown is. So the best thing to do is to come up to this standard and compare your samples to the standard. Right? We have a little bit of um, vagaries on the, uh, you know, the the basic side, but the acidic side is is pretty good to go. So. Here, come up and test your samples. That's the best way to do it. Compare your, your sample to whatever color you see. Go ahead. You can even take them out of the, uh, of the sample, uh, of the tray. Sometimes it's going to be in between. Sometimes it'll be off the scale, and we'll have to test. We'll have to talk about what that means as far as our uh, experimental design because we probably don't have the perfect setup exactly for like that color right there. That color right there is not on our scale, so we, we can talk about what that means. There are some uh, problems associated with doing a qualitative color metric based uh, test, and we'll talk about what those are. But make sure you get a good idea of where your sample falls so that you can infer the pH. Okay, so go ahead and do that if you haven't done that already. Here too, it's hard to say that this color indicates this pH, absolutely. So those would be uh, instances where you wouldn't have the, the evidence to support your claim. Uh, what's another problem besides not having a color represented in the standard? Yeah? There are so many chemicals and different substances that really have no way to measure where you're going to get. Okay. You, you can still get a, an estimate of the pH because we're just testing whatever that solution is. But I'll, I'll offer the following. It is problematic if you're using color as your main way of evaluating the experiment if the sample that you're testing is what? Is already, is already colored, right? Does this mean that mouthwash, which is totally green, uh, does it mean that it's a pH of an 11 necessarily? No. So this complicates your experiment, right? The problem with that is that you know you're you're mixing colors, um, so it's not a perfect way of doing it. In fact, it, experimentally, it's probably better to use a pH probe and just get the number. But there's very little thinking that goes on when you press a button and you see a number pop up, right? So um, that's why I like to do this experiment because you have to think a little more about the experiment uh, that, that you're performing. So what would make a good control in this experiment? Amongst all the unknowns that we looked at, what are the um, best controls, right? We, we treated them all as unknowns, but if you were picking an unknown to create as a control, what would it be in this particular experiment? What would you say, Jerry? Really? Yeah, cabbage. cabbage. How would that be a control? So that's a constant. Remember, a control is an experimental group that's not receiving uh, necessarily a test, right? So it's, it doesn't need a test to know that it works and what it is. So it's, it's difficult in this experiment to think about it this way, but what do you know on that table that already has a pretty low or pretty high pH? So you could put water in there and see if it comes out around neutral. That'd be a good control. 
you put purple uh, cabbage extract in, into this, what color do you think it comes out as? Probably pretty close to this, right? Maybe even a little more purple because it's neutral-ish. Um, but soda, you know soda is a pretty acidic substance, right? So soda should give you a pink color, pink that says three on it, because we know that soda is around pH three. So that would be a good control to see if the experiment's working. The problem with soda is what? Yeah. What about that? Yeah, so it's brown to start, for sure. Yeah. Um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the medicines that you looked at, milk or magnesia or mylanta, what is the job of this, uh, these substances? This is a last one. What does uh, mylanta treat? Heartburn usually? What do you think causes heartburn? Acids. So, would you hypothesize that the pH of something that you're taking to counter acids would be basic or acidic? This is probably more basic than anything. Anybody test my lanta? You got that opaqueish green substance, but in the in the aqueous part that's not uh, opaque, you get a green result, right? What does green result mean on our uh, experiment? It's basic. Right? You see how you can apply that logic to confirm things that you already have an idea of? Right? So things that you already have an idea of in this particular experiment would be a good control. The other ones would be more experimental because I have no idea what the pH of um, peak T is. Anybody know what that turned out to be? I'm guessing it's a little less safe. So you see how we're using scientific skills here? Uh, you're making observations, you're recording data, you're drawing conclusions and making inferences based on the information that you're looking at. Everybody understand that? There'll be some practice, there'll, there'll be some problems like this on the quiz, uh, on the test too. Okay? So know how this system works. Colorimetric, qualitative experiment. Okay, you're using that color standard to make inferences about the unknown. Fair enough. All right, let's move on to carbs.